Hi, Elizabeth. How are you doing? Hi, Derek. I'm good. Thanks so much for inviting me to join. Well, thank you very much for coming for a coffee. Um, so TEDx likes to... Oh, hang on a second. That was a very pretty cup. Yeah, I, I drew it by myself. Oh, wow. Yes. <laughs> of, course, of course you drew it by yourself. That's <laughs> So, so uh, Elizabeth Schilling, this is, you were really nice and very kind to come to our TEDx Luxembourg City event, uh, our TEDx Luxembourg City Women event, in fact, um, just in December of this last year. And, uh, and so we, we asked you to come because, of course, we love to have just a, a variety of, of talks and performances at a TED event. And so... We were, we were talking amongst the team and one of the team members, I think had must have recently seen you or, or heard you uh, on the radio and, um, and she suggested that, that we invite you. So I'd never heard of you personally and, uh, and so I, I quickly looked you up and then we organized a, a meeting. And I, I've got to tell you, Elizabeth, and I think I've kind of mentioned it in the past, but when I first met you and you did the performance of Felt for me as kind of a, just a, an introduction to what you do, that was a really um, quite emotional experience because mm -hmm. not only did you do this performance that I would not normally go and see because it was really very, so different, but then you made a talk about it and it was just really mind altering the talk when so first experiencing the talk the 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 performance and then listening to you talk and then watching the performance again which is what you came to do at our TED event so uh, just before I carry on I, I'll, I'll put down here um, just the the link to your TED talk so if somebody hasn't seen it they can click on that and go and have a look and I'd certainly recommend they do that because it was it's really it's it's such an experience to go through your talk. It was it was absolutely wonderful. Aww. But so for those that aren't familiar with you, um, can I ask you just to kind of give, introduce yourself and give a bit of your background? Yeah, sure. So first of all, thank you, Dirk, for your kind words, which really mean a lot to me, because <laughs> it it was a lot of work to make felt happen, to produce it, and to create it. Um, so Dirk has hinted at what I do. I am an independent lead dancer in Kirkova. I usually dance in a lot of productions internationally with different choreographers, but I also have my own company and uh, I also produce and create and do my own work and we also usually give lots of workshops. So uh, all this is currently not happening. <laughs> yeah, I, th I think that's, that's one of the issues, isn't it? So, so clearly you're, you're usually busy and traveling the world yeah. and then suddenly, you know, we have this, this pandemic outbreak that really kind of came very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, yes, it can be argued that it was around, you know, the end of last year, but for us, for me, it just, it, suddenly everything happened almost overnight uh, and the consequences happened shockingly quickly, I feel. Um, so how did that change things for you? I mean, clearly you traveled around a lot and now suddenly you're home. Yeah, it's true. So uh, I guess you can imagine my usual life as the following. So I'm usually every week somewhere else and uh, or every second day or even every day. So I don't really usually live at home or have a home as such. Um, so for me, this, you know, really this whole crisis really stopped everything. So my whole life has changed and it has had a huge impact. And as you say, it came really quickly because I remember we had our last performance on the 6th of March in London and there was still, we had over 100 people there and we hacked and did all those things and suddenly the week after it wasn't possible anymore. And, uh, you know, basically overnight I got all the performances for the spring cancelled, um, every workshop, every residency. Uh, so I, I was supposed to be on research residencies for a new work. Um, actually now in England or in Tuscany and in Vienna and all of those things were postponed. We don't know when they will happen yet. So it's true that I think especially for the arts it had a, you know, it's having a huge impact because nobody knows when we can actually um, start touring or start doing our work again. So um, yeah, the impact was and is huge. <laughs> but so you haven't, of course, you haven't just kind of left it there. You know, you... So since since the TED event, I've been following you on Instagram, and so 
suddenly, you know, I get, I get these announcements and, and also I think through websites that were talking about it. Um, and you, you were doing some kind of performance online, which was really unique. Do you, do you want to talk about the, the shoe dance? <laughs> yeah, so, well, yeah, my shoe dance project actually um, was born really spontaneously out of, actually in the first week of lockdown. Um, because I think I've, I've experienced a lot of friends getting very sad from day to day and almost desperate because, as I said, our performances were cancelled um, overnight and it, it was a situation of great insecurity. And I've experienced my friends getting very sad and uh, I just wanted to invent, find an idea or invent something that would give them hope again and that would bring some joy into their lives and that would also make them believe in their creativity and encourage them to keep being creative. So I, I don't know how the shoe dance idea came about. I have to say it was just it was just on one Friday morning over breakfast that I just thought, why not do a shoe dance? And then I just, I just went, uh, went outside and did a shoe dance. So a shoe dance really means just putting on some shoes and just filming your shoes while dancing so the rest of the body wouldn't be seen. And uh, then I just posted that on, in my Insta story and, um, you know, invited everyone to also do shoe dances with their favorite shoes and their favorite piece of music and send those shoe dances back to me. And uh, I've had an amazing response from so many different people I would have never expected. <laughs> so it really became a project. Um, we've had, you know, kids doing shoe dances. We've had... Uh, famous dancers doing shoe dances, directors, curators, but also my neighbor or people who would dance, um, you know, dance as a hobby or people who, who would usually never dance, but just feel like doing shoe dance whilst in isolation. So it's become this project where really people, I think now from over 19 countries, um, you know, have participated in it. It's, it was so beautiful. It's been so beautiful to witness uh, because I can really see that uh, people put a lot of creative thought in and that every shoe dance has a very individual atmosphere to them. And um, so what I've been doing with those shoe dances, I share them via my Insta stories and my Facebook stories and on Twitter almost every day. But I also make a big film out of them, uh, which you can look up on my website. Um, and this continues because we're still in isolation, and uh, we, but we keep dancing. <laughs> and so your website, it's Elizabeth Schilling, and it's Elizabeth with an S, not a Z. Yeah, Elizabeth Schilling and Schilling with S-C-H-I-L-L-I-N-G.com. Dot com, very good. <laughs> so, and, and I've noticed shoe dance but there was one particular part of the shoe dance that i looked at and i thought those are the oddest shoes i've ever seen but <laughs> it was somebody with fingers and sort of shoes oh, yeah. oh but that, i think there was a little girl's idea of doing a shoe dance with barbie shoes <laughs> no, <laughs> but i thought that but that was so creative and it was it's, it's yeah. brilliant and also like i think you know, our audiences for those shoe dances really grew because the shoe dances are very humorous and they are joyful to watch. And um, for me, it's also really a sign of solidarity between all of those people from all of those different um, places, um, bringing themselves together online, but uh, with uh, responding to the same creative idea. So uh, I've been really touched seeing them. I hope you'll be too. <laughs> yeah, it was, it, it was absolutely wonderful. So I'll, I'll put a link to your website then underneath so that they can see that as well. Um, so, and, and have you been involved with any other projects then? So clearly that's taking, that's taking time and that you're getting that out there, which is lovely, but have you been doing other things? Yeah, I guess, um, well, I haven't had such a quiet time as anyone, <laughs> everyone else because somehow like the ads are responding to the situation really quickly. Um, so I've had already requests from companies who I would usually work with to start rehearsing online. Um, then there are lots of interviews or artistic exchanges um, over Zoom, which are also public or through Instagram Live, which is really great because it really gives us an opportunity to connect over continents and which has been really inspiring. Uh, then, I don't know if you're aware of that, but um, the dance, the international dance community is really offering hundreds of classes every week. Um, almost every big company is offering online classes via Zoom, so you might find yourself dancing with uh, 900 people over Zoom, <laughs> which is amazing. Yeah, it's just incredible. And those classes are kind of free, but you can donate. But as everyone knows, the situation is so difficult for the arts as for anyone else at the moment. So it's really, um, I think, also a very generous, solidary offer that um, people are giving. And it's just fantastic because 
you know, you get the chance to, uh, to get taught by the stars <laughs> that you might usually never get, you know, get an opportunity to um, be taught by. So this has been happening and I've also given a masterclass. So that was very interesting over Zoom <laughs> because you have people from all over the world participating, which is a rather unusual experience. And what else? So the UN did a call for projects, for artistic projects, um, uh, encouraging artists to think about how their, the artists could, with their, within their specific medium, could um, support getting the key messages of the current crisis out. So this would be messages around physical distancing, our personal hygiene, our, um, our kindness, our activities um, that you could do at home. So I propose two projects to them. And moreover, I have also been thinking just for myself and my, for my own, own company. Um, so what is my responsibility? as an artist, how can I help, you know? And uh, so inspired by the media, encouraging people to wash their hands a lot at the moment and also how to wash your hands correctly. I've been thinking um, to do, a, um, to choreograph a hand wash dance, <laughs> uh, which is not yet published, but it will come very soon. Um, so this hand wash dance is uh, quite a playful and humorous approach on how to wash your hands correctly. Um, because I think nowadays we are supposed to wash our hands so so many times per day um, and it could potentially become like an obligation, obligationary task that is not a lot of fun. But uh, through the hand wash dance, I'm trying to show people that it can indeed be fun to wash your hands because it's also on this music which uh, everybody knows so you can sing along and will, this will hopefully encourage you to wash your hands so that all viruses will get cleaned off your hands. <laughs> What a fantastic idea. So you've gone from the feet to the hands. You're really yeah. these strategies. But if I may, I, so you were talking about how, how different it is giving a class over Zoom or doing a performance over Zoom. So, I mean, how are you finding that? Because I, I can imagine in one instance, it's got to be quite a difficult thing to do because there's not that instant feedback of having an audience there. Yeah. But then likewise, I mean, you're mentioning you know, potentially having 900 people tune in to, to watch. So what's that experience like? Yeah, it's very unusual because um, I guess, I think for, especially in my choreographic approach, what is import really important for me is presence. And presence is something that you cannot project over the screen, no matter what. And I think that's the magic of art. Um, so over the screen, we are losing that. Um, so it was, you know, usually when you're a teacher, and you will know this yourself, like you always get some kind of feedback from the students, where they are, what they need. And I'm somebody, I, I try to keep really my senses open while I teach so that I can, you know, give, that, give this feedback really quickly. So obviously this is a little bit lost over Zoom <laughs> because everybody is muted. But also I'm currently in the countryside, so our internet is not like the best. So sometimes our video is getting stuck. <laughs> so that was really funny. So um, um, so I, I've always, you know, you try to get good feedback in a different way. Um, it was, it was an, an unusual exper experience and something that you would have to get used to over time, I think. Um, but it also shows us, you know, what a pre precious situation we were in beforehand um, if, when we were dancing in a room together. Nevertheless, I think it was really special to give class to people all over the world at the same time. I think this still blows my imagination away that this is possible. Yeah, that's uh, that, that's it's incredible how things have changed, but hopefully some part of that continues, <clears throat> and then other parts we can get back to get back to normal. Because yeah. you know, I, I think experiencing that in a community together with the presence, I think there's really nothing quite like it. And and I know that's how I feel being on stage at a TEDx event. It, it's really lovely to just have that mass of people in front of you and just all experiencing a wonderful idea together it, it's absolutely great mm -hmm. if, if i can ask you for one message so you know our audience today are, are typically uh, ted fans and they're very used to going away with an idea something something new what, what would be your what would be your message and not necessarily an idea but your message to the audience that you would want to leave people with hmm, well i guess 
I guess this, I guess this current situation is very difficult for a lot of us from different perspectives, but a lot uh, a lot might have something to do with the current financial difficulty. And uh, but I would nevertheless hope that everybody finds something positive in this situation because I guess the quiet that we are currently in can also be a gift and uh, a gift which might invite us for introspection and also for reflection on how you know the world after this could be so how can we potentially you know become more environmentally friendly and have less meetings in person but maybe over zoom and um, but also i think this quiet is potentially um uh, an offer for us to reconnect with people or with friends that we haven't been in touch with for a very long time or it's also an opportunity for us to find new hobbies or ways of entertaining ourselves that uh, we might not usually have the time for so I do hope that no matter how difficult everyone's situation is that you find something positive in there and that you can find ho hope from moment to moment, moment that you're living through this at the moment. Yeah that's, uh, that's very poignant that's, uh, that's lovely. Very good. Elizabeth, thank you very, very much for joining me for a coffee. And, uh, and I look forward to hopefully <laughs> seeing you in person um, yes. very soon and, yes. and experiencing another performance very soon. Thank you, Jack. Thanks so much for your invitation. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye, Elizabeth.